Hey, Pastor Rick here, and here I am with Pastor John, our campus pastor of our North Braddock campus. Something very important is happening this November, and uh, what is that, Pastor John? Well, I've been uh, reliably informed that there's an election that's happening on the 5th of November, first Tuesday of November, so big historic election like it usually is. So we're going to have a conversation about this day. Yes. So first of all, Pastor John, why should a Christian vote? I believe that a Christian should vote because we have a responsibility, no matter what land, no matter what time period we live in, we have a responsibility to make the place we live better. And so because we live in a land that offers citizens the, the right and opportunity to vote, to have duly elected leaders, I believe that as Christians, we have a responsibility to, to vote. And, and I've seen varying numbers, but one number that shocks me is that somewhere around 32 million Christians, church attending Christians, will not vote in this presidential election. That just blows my mind. Wow. And I know that um, we're pretty much a two-party Mm -hmm. country right yep. here, but there are third party candidates. And I know a lot of people say, well, I, I'm going to vote my, my conscience. I'm going to vote, you know, for, for one of them. And I mean, I have different opinions regarding this, you know, and one of my thoughts is, is, is just because I like the coach of uh, an NFL team that that's very, very poor. I wouldn't bet on them because right. to make it to the Super Bowl, because I wouldn't want to waste my bet or waste my energy there. Right. So what do you say just regarding the third party besides the, the top two candidates here? Well, and I think it's, it's valid to have a third party, but I think we have to be realistic. And, and one of the things that a lot of times I see people who vote third party, it's because neither of the primary two parties are appealing to them. And I understand that. But I also understand that there's never been even the remotest chance of a third party candidate being duly elected, not just popular vote, which really doesn't decide it, but to be able to obtain enough electoral votes to win the presidency. And so for me, as much as sometimes it is a tension, like mm -hmm. I don't like this person, I don't like this person, uh, the, the third party vote to me just does, it, it seems like you're just... You're, you're almost copping out of getting involved. And, and I understand it because politics is dirty business, but at the same time, like you said, I want to put my money, my vote, on someone that has the best chance to win. Right. So that's it. Just vote for somebody who has a chance to win. Yes. Gotcha. Now, there are a lot of issues going mm -hmm. on. Now, we, we've talked a lot about um, the difference between you know, a platform in a party or a candidate. First of all, just unpack that, that term platform. So when you think about, and again, as Christians, we're voting a biblical world view. Yes. Uh, we look at things biblically in worldview. So, so this isn't a political conversation, this is a biblical conversation that applies to our worldview here. Yep. So when you talk about platform, what does that mean to you? So for me, the way I break it down is, a lot of times people will vote based upon the person, or based upon the party. But I think the wisest choice is to vote based upon the platform. And here's what I mean by that. Because the person is an individual. They may represent the party, but at the same time, the party will outlast the person. But even then, the, the person or the party is less important than the platform. And when I say platform, I mean, what are the policies that they are for? What are the policies that they are against? What's the platform they're running from? And, and all of the political players right now, they have a platform. We're going to do this as it regards the economy or this thing or that thing. And so I want to vote for the platform that best reflects what God is for. And I want to oppose the platform that reflects what is opposed to God. And so that is what I, because here's the thing, neither one of the parties are inherently godly. Neither one of the parties are inherently, quote unquote, kingdom. So I have to take my kingdom, my biblical worldview and perspective, and I have to look at the platform that best uh, progresses God's ideas for humanity 
And, and I, have to, I have to stand opposed, and I know a lot of people don't like saying, but I have to oppose things that oppose God. And so that's why I look at the platforms, because the person can look good, they can sound good, they can say nice things, the party can have a background that, oh, we used to be this way or that way, but it's the platform. What are you proposing to do if we duly elect you to have power? Good. And so there's, but looking at, at things through a biblical worldview, there are some things that are obviously really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, um, obviously in the Christian world, pro-life tends to come up first and foremost, but that's not the only one. No. There are so many pro-family, uh, pro-economy, mm -hmm. pro-peace. I mean, there's over and over and over. So when you look at the platform, what what is uh, most important to you? Now we're going to start with pro life. Right, that's a given. But what what after that? What do you look at after that as important? So so after after pro life, uh, one of the things that I look at, especially uh, as we sit here today, United States of America, 2024, I have to look at the economic platform. Um, we've had a tough couple of years here. And so when I think of the economy, it's not just because of I want to have money, but as a man, as a husband, as a father, I have a responsibility to provide. Second John, or excuse me, third John, uh, verse two, I believe it is, there's a prayer that John offers. It says, I pray that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And, and so I believe that I have a right to prosper to the best of my ability. Now in different countries and different places and different history and periods of time, prospering can look different, but my vote can affect not only how I prosper and therefore am able to provide, but how my neighbors can prosper. Because whether my neighbors are Christians or not, I need to cast my vote for the platform that is going to best help us as a nation prosper economically. Because then you can do so much more when you're not worrying about how you're gonna pay the bills each month. And so for me, economy is a big factor in that regard. Another one for me is, is as you mentioned, the pro-family. And, and unfortunately, I believe I'm, I'm gonna be 47 years old just a couple of weeks after the election. And in my 47 years of life, I can't remember it being as easy as it is today to look at one platform and very easily and with good conscience and, and a good heart say, there is a platform that is anti God's view for family. And so that makes it very easy for me because when I say God's view for family, it's one man married to one woman producing offspring and hopefully raising them in the fear and admonition of yes. the Lord. And so there is a platform that, that is very much against that and would like to see other things besides that take place. And, and for me, I have to let my biblical principles govern my, my uh, using my vote there. Yeah, I mean, just even being pro-parent alone, mm -hmm. that parents can have the say what goes on in training their yep. children, uh, choosing the school and the education, uh, making decisions like that. that th those are a lot of them that are being taken away by one platform stance very, very clearly. Well, and that's why, that's why platform is so important because we're, we're a nation of 50 states and there are undeniably in certain states in this country legislation being passed because the states have a responsibility to govern. And so when we're talking about voting, we're not just talking about the federal election. Right. Who are you voting for in your state? Who are you voting for in your local municipalities? Who are you voting for for school board and different things of that nature? And there are states that are putting forth legislation that takes the rights of parents for what their kids learn about in school, what their kids share with their teachers in school. They're taking those rights away and they're writing it into law. And see, this is why I say platform, because you might look and say, oh, this particular candidate has never said anything about that. But you know what? That particular candidate's platform is connected to that other person's platform. And if they're not standing there and openly opposing and saying, yes, the people in our same platform are doing things that we don't like, then that means they're for it. And so I have to take that into account because as, as, as a parent, it's my God-given right to, to, to not only provide, but to raise my child. 
And when you start taking my rights away, you just don't get, get, get you get an angry papa. And so that's something that, that, that I think has to be taken into account. Could, I think it's fair to say that even free speech is at stake. Mm -hmm. Being able to communicate freely about what we believe yep. from a biblical worldview and looking at God's views. I mean, we're being ostracized, pushed, pushed aside mm -hmm. actually for some of these views even now. You know, so those are a couple. So uh, what about peace? Peace uh, in, in in the world and, 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 and uh, wars and, and things like that. Um, does that affect you at all or it affect you in the way you look at a platform? It does, maybe not as much as some of the other topics, but peace is an important thing because Jesus wants to bring his kingdom to bear on the earth, not just in the United States. And his government is one of peace. He's the prince of peace. And the governments, mm -hmm. plural, rest upon his shoulders. And so um, it's, it's without question, the United States of America has been given a great opportunity to be a, a great ally mm -hmm. for peace and democracy in the world. And sometimes peace does lead to conflict. But at the same time, I'm looking at the platform that wants to uh, not, I can't, I don't want to say impose peace, but champions peace. And this makes it very easy in this election as well, because unlike any election that I can remember, the two primary candidates for president both have four years of results and outcome in the highest office very in the good. land. Yes. And I can, without any question, look at one platform and say, this platform for four years did not start any new wars. They actually brought peace in areas where there traditionally is not peace. The Middle East Accords and different things of that na nature. And I can look at one, another platform and say, this platform has involved us in more conflict than we had before. Right. And has done it in a way that maybe I don't necessarily agree with. Now, that, that's me personally. But you can't look at the last eight years where one candidate had four another candidate had four, and say that there wasn't a more peaceful time during one, globally, and a more war-filled, strife-filled time during another. Man, I, 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 I agree with you 100% with that. And so, so are there any other issues, or maybe let's just tackle this one. When it comes to a character, of a candidate, yeah. again, not the character of a platform, yeah. because that's a conglomerate of people, but the character of a candidate. Yeah. And again, I just wanna say that these things apply not only federally, mm -hmm. but also on a state level, that we need to get educated, okay? And we're gonna to get to that in a few minutes. But when it comes to character, how do you look at this when it comes to character, when it comes to the candidate? Because you know, I'm from a generation you know, decades ago, we could look at the character of mm -hmm. one person and it was clearly different than yeah. another. Where now that's not the case. And it has caused blurred lines yeah. and blurred vision. Yep. So could you comment on that? So character I think is big. And I think there's a lot of you probably seeing this right now that that's really kind of a, of a defining factor in your vote. And I think that that's good to a degree. Because, and I say to a degree for this reason, because I'm not voting for candidates based upon their character. I'm voting on candidates based upon their ability to lead and their ability to produce positive outcomes. Now, character will lend itself to that. Character will bear itself out in that. And unfortunately, I can't think of either of the presidential candidates having the type of character that I would want to raise my children to emulate. That's just a fact. Um, and even with the vice presidential candidates, there's only one, and, and I'm still learning about these individuals that maybe, but nevertheless, that is an important factor, but I have to look and say, how are these people going to increase not only my quality of life, but my neighbor's quality of life, and even more than that, from a biblical Christian perspective, which one of these candidates and their platform character notwithstanding, is going to produce and promote biblical values for the nation I'm leaving my children. That's important for me. A generational mindset. 
You know, I think about a, a situation I had when I was working at the hospital, and there was one specific surgeon who was really gruff. He was, his personality was, was uh, kind of sharp, and it, was, it really rubbed you the wrong way. And, uh, and a lot of people would talk about him and say, well, I could never go to him because of the way he, he talks mm -hmm. and the way he speaks. But out of all the surgeons in his class, he was the most efficient yep. and got results and got it done. And I remember trying to convince people that, listen, just because you don't like his personality, there's one surgeon here that's going to get you mm -hmm. the results that you need and they're going to help you in your future. Why don't we choose on that, not the way that he speaks and communicates? And it was really difficult for people to grab a hold of that. But when you do, it gets you over that hump and you see like really what's important in, in, in the future yeah. there. And I like what you're saying here about generational. We got to think generational. We got to think what's what's best. I mean, people are getting their heads beat in, you know, with finances right yep. now and inflation and the cost of housing. And and I really do believe that God God is a capitalist. I believe when I look at the the <laughs> Bible in a biblical worldview, I believe in capitalism. I believe sowing and reaping. Mm -hmm. I believe not just in working hard, but working smart with creativity, and that God honors that. Yep. You know, that's, that's what I believe. And so I want to, I want to vote on all levels accordingly, you know? So are there any other issues to you that are important platform wise? Well, uh, even just to say to the financial thing, cause some people might challenge that statement, but it's the Bible that says in second Thessalonians chapter three, if you don't work, you don't eat. And that is an important thing. And so as far as platform issues, obviously pro-life is a big one. And I'll be honest with you. Right now, neither one of these right. platforms are as pro-life as I want them to be. But there's one that's clearly, definitively, further from anything that God would say is pro-life. And so, of all of these factors, I take these things into account and I remind myself, one, that God is in control, mm -hmm. right? Psalm 2 tells us he sits enthroned in the heavens and he laughs at all the rulers of the earth. Isaiah chapter 9 tells us the governments are on his shoulders. But God, in his sovereign will, chooses to participate with humanity throughout history. And we here in the United States have been given by our founders, God-given and, and unalienable rights to be a government that is for the people and by the people. But like you said, it's not just for the people of today. It is for the generations to come. And this election season, we have to ask our, ourselves, what kind of country are we leaving for our children? Which one of these platforms who, as I've said, we actually have a cross section of four years with both of these platforms operating. Which of those four-year segments over the last eight years do you think is going to set us up? Which of those platforms is going to create the kind of schools and education, economic opportunities? Which one of those platforms is going to move us closer to a godly standard of life and liberty and a pursuit of happiness? We have to ask ourselves these questions because we cannot afford to allow our emotions and our minds to be swayed by the media. We need to be in the word of God. We need to be under sound, godly teaching. We need to remove all of the other elements that would cause us to vote, race, gender, all of these other things. Well, this person's a, a, a female, or this person is this, or that. We have to go to the Bible. Right. Biblical worldview. Biblical worldview. And that's what we're urging you to do, is look at things through a biblical worldview. Mm -hmm. And remembering that our hope is not in a party or a person. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Yeah the hope of the gospel. And so we're gonna pray for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added yes. unto you. So we're gonna seek righteousness. And I heard a statement that really helped me and we'll be closing with this here, is that 
Is it, you know, there's just the lesser of two evils, the lesser of two evils. And you know, and that, that tends to put us like, oh, there's just nothing good. But how about this, and I heard this recently, is how about we vote for who is going to do the least amount of evil. Amen. From a biblical world view. So we're asking you to get educated and you're gonna see there uh, pop up on the screen a couple websites that you can go to. Get educated, get prayed up, but remember, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Any closing comments? I think you said it best, Pastor Rick. Nailed it. Thanks so much for spending this time with us.